What's up, everyone? So I'm afraid that we're going to have to start this on a bit of a somber note. Or maybe we can look at it as something to put this whole deal into a bit of perspective. I need to dedicate this entire set to our bass player, James Saboni's mother, Twink Wilson, who passed away on Monday. James needed to be here to do this. He needed to be here with all of us. This entire set goes out to her memory. And I'd like to ask if we could have a moment of silence for her. And then let's set this off.
Let's fucking hit thing! Yeah! Rip! Blow light! Jam jump! Fully dead! Bomb through! Bang! Where's all we spent? No way to cross! Fall in! Human Galactic! Bloody shit! as much as any band that's ever existed. But do us a favor, just be conscious of what's going on at your feet. You know what I'm saying? If somebody goes and they disappear, find them, get them up. There's nothing scarier than being stuck on the floor in one of these situations. If every one of us up front here can just be conscious of what's going on around you, we should be fine. There is no reason whatsoever for security to be putting their hands on any of you. Let's not create a situation where they have to do that. I wrote this song a long, long time ago when I realized 
that I was capable of being in the grips of actual depression. Something that I hadn't had to face through my teenage years. It didn't come along until later and I had to realize that I had bouts of extreme loneliness and having a hard time figuring out what this all means and what it's all worth. And I'm absolutely not alone there. I can't imagine how many of us in this room have had to suffer through similar feelings. At the time of writing this song, I believe that all I needed was Ernest Hemingway and Akira Kurosawa and Martin Scorsese and Charles Bukowski to help me through. And then I realized that that is not enough. That art is not going to save you by itself. And I just want to speak to anyone who finds themselves dealing with loneliness and depression and to tell you the way that I found to survive it is to reach out to those that love you. To reach out to those that you don't want to burden, that you don't want to worry, that you feel like aren't going to be interested. But I promise you that that's what they're there for. That is what friends and family are there for. Do not suffer alone. This song is called The Big Gun Down.
without somebody, and this is not a joke, losing their wedding ring. So, if you could just find it, we'd really appreciate it. So everybody look at their feet and find the wedding ring. That happens most shows. It'll probably happen two or three more times tonight. We'll get it squared away. The wedding rings seem to miraculously be returned at Bane shows. If anybody saw an iPhone that has a picture of this stupid bastard on it, then he lost his iPhone too because everybody in the world knows you stage dive with a fucking iPhone. Put your hands together for Saves the Day! What a dream come true. We spent the summer of 1998 on the road together, both of us out on our first tours ever. 
No one knew much who we were. Holding this moment in their first LP had just been out for a couple of weeks. But it formed a bond that never died. And we are so thankful that they were able to come back and be a part of this, this night tonight. Thank you, Chris, and everyone else who made it happen. This is a song off that first release of our first three seven inches. Wrote it a long time ago when I was frustrated with running into people who kept talking about how things aren't as good now as they used to be. And everyone around me who was my age or older seemed to have this pretty bitter chip on their shoulder. And it was very uninviting to the young kids and it felt counter to me to what this was supposed to be about about being excited about what was happening right fucking now and not living in the past and not being bitter, jaded, or so fucking lazy that you just don't have it in you anymore to dig deep and continue to find the beauty in this community. So I wrote this song, it's called Count Me Out. <laughs> And he's on the fucking truck! Come on, sir! Move it up! Run it down! Whoop it by us! What is still fair, my boys? drums standing on his fucking head. Uh, Nate Manning, calling Nate Manning to the stage. You have a telephone call at the front desk. Yo! You know how baseball teams have a bench? A bench they can go to if they need a guy? Bain has been very lucky to always have a bench.
to always have guys that are willing to step up and fill in a slot if someone couldn't come on tour. Someone had a birthday party or an anniversary. Everyone, most everyone from the bench is here tonight. And we're having them all play a song or two. Nate's back. Spent some of the best years I ever had on the road together. One of my favorite dogs to tour with. I miss him all the time. He's gonna play this one. I wanna congratulate him on his recent marriage. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. This is real. I used to live up the hill here. Up off of Highland Street for about 10, 11 years. And one day I really was walking home from work and carved in the cement on a block on the sidewalk it said, live the life that you love, love the life that you live. Let's try to remember that.
There's more balls on stage right now than out in the audience. Figuratively, figuratively speaking, and literally. But we're gonna get these things off. If you don't mind fucking sitting on them, putting them down your pants, taking them home. I know. Kate says keep them out there. She doesn't it's distracting her. She feels like she's on deal or no deal. my own family and that goes back a long long time with me I remember being maybe 10 years old and having my mother have to break it to me that my good friend across the street was moving away to Concord New Hampshire which when you're 10 might as well be moving away to fucking Dubai and ever since that I've had a real weird thing with letting go of friendship letting go of the bonds that I tend to over-romanticize and build all out of proportion. And then getting in this band, being able to travel all over the place, be able to make friends with bands who I loved and looked up to, who I respected, who I wanted so badly to be able to consider our peers and then our friends. And so many of you here are here tonight. So many people who we've met along the way along the road who have become more than just mere friends to me made incredible journeys to be here i can't name you all i can't name your bands i hope that at least at one point you have looked me in the eye and known what it's meant to me to consider you people more than just someone who i've met along the way someone who i've shared secrets with amazing times scary times insane times Fucking so many of you are here tonight. 
and I want to dedicate this song to you. It's called As the World Turns. So I walk alone. Why I never run by you. next one out man for letting me try to explain and in doing that maybe be a little easier to understand as a person and absolutely being able to find a way and move on and not feel so alone with the worst thing that ever happened to me
even halfway done yet you're really okay with that you want a big long drawn out play almost every song we have kind of set seems crazy to me seems like I'd get fucking bored but I was outvoted the voting committee backstage when we wrote this set list was very large. Normally, <laughs> I am the sole voting committee on the set list. Tonight I wanted to give that up, allow everyone to come in and talk about what they wanted to play, songs they wanted to jump up and play. So we got a big one for you, but for what it's worth, I think it's a little hokey. I think 10 songs and then a microphone drop would have been the illest, but I voted. We're going to play some rippers right now. There's any one message, sort of one thing that in 10 years we're gonna say, I don't understand, what were they talking about all the time? What did he have so much to say between songs? What did they stand for? We don't collectively stand for anything, except I hope this. And individually, each and every one of us need to face this and think about it a little bit. Reasons, not rules, make us strong. Yeah! We the stars rule! We the stars rule! We the stars rule! We the stars rule! What's it? Go, 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 go! Too bad for our changes! The only person I have! We the stars rule!
specific people people who understand what it means for a bunch of friends to just sit on a wall together and shoot the shit and watch the minutes go by be silly and crazy there are people in this room here who at other some points in their lives had that perfected to an art form for us. And I wrote that song to recognize them, to recognize how sacred those moments were to me and to us in Atlanta with Jeff Jock, in Orange County with Dave Mandel and Edo, our brothers in Down to Nothing who ruthlessly, relentlessly came on the road with us and showed us the times of our lives. Andrew Truss, Big fucking Bob. Yeah! Big Bob tried to do everything this past two days. He wanted to do all the work. He would have wrote the set list if I asked him to. He would have tied my sneakers if I needed him to. I told him to chill. I told him I just wanted this to be a hardcore show. I didn't want all that. And he said it's what he does. He said he was only going to be happy if we were able to relax and enjoy this, take it all in. Bob, Steve, everyone for their very, very hard work these last two days, making this feel so effortless. Here's a song we haven't been playing in a lot, a lot of years. Maybe seven, eight years. 
It's quite simply about sticking to the things that you say. Even when people around you start turning their backs or getting uncomfortable or walking away, telling you you're crazy. If you feel something, if you believe it in all your heart, if there is some meter going off in you that tells you this is what's right and I am going to make a fucking stand for it and I'll make everyone in this room uncomfortable if I have to for the sake of standing by what is right. That's what punk rock taught me anyway. Stick to your fucking guns. When someone says something fucked up, shitty, racist, hateful, ignorant, you don't have to nod along for the sake of their fucking comfort. This song is called Pot Committed. Only way to know. 
Everyone okay? This is crazy. This is the day that I have been trying to come to grips with, picturing it in my head, wondering what it would be like, what it would feel like, what I was gonna say, where in the set we would play this song, I don't know how we got so lucky to have a song like this that seems to collectively make people as, as happy as it has for so a ridiculous amount of years. Uh, we've, we've sang this one together, screamed it. I don't think we've ever played a set without it, maybe once or twice. I want to try to find the words to thank everyone who's ever scream this with us who's ever taken a second and just felt like they wanted to participate with this song it's a weird thing having a sort of a hit song or feeling like we got one really really right when i rolled it all up when i wrote it all i wanted was to go back in time i wanted to go back to being a kid again and to feeling completely wide-eyed and excited about every little detail to this. 
before the pettiness seeps in, before familiarity breeds contempt, when everything about it feels so new and fresh and exciting. And unfortunately, life doesn't work that way. We don't get to go backwards. We make messes of things. We forget what's important to us. We get distracted and we hold on to what we have however we can. In any way that we can, we just try the best with what we have. And I think that's worth noting. We can't go back. We can't start again. But we can try not to forget. We can try every once in a while not to forget that this community, this scene is made up of all of our collective efforts, all of our passions, all of our ideas, all of our voices. And I know each one of us feels like our one voice isn't going to be enough. I feel like my voice wasn't enough. All I wanted was for kids to stop bullying each other, to stop punching and kicking and treating people like they were punching bags. That's going to go on. Tomorrow, that's going to continue. But I needed to try. I needed to just fucking try, because if I didn't try, then maybe the kid next to me doesn't try, maybe the person next to him doesn't try, and things just go to shit. This is about each and every one of us just trying, just not being afraid to use your voice and hoping to make some impact on something, the slightest change, the slightest dent, to just make this better, to just leave it a little bit better than how we found it, because it deserves that because I believe that it changed most of our lives. It enriched us in ways that would be different for each and every one of us. We can't go back, but God damn it, we can try to keep it special while we're here. Please, everyone in the room, the balcony, please understand this is the very last time Ben will ever play this song and how much it's meant to us every night, 100 nights, to have kids going buck and screaming along to us. Thank you very, very, very much. Let's fucking do this. Can we? Everyone! Get up here! Wow! 
It wouldn't be a Bane show unless we broke a string, so it's gonna be a minute. So, 
Let's talk about the bands. Let's talk about the people who came together and made this weekend so magical, so special. So much of us just being able to sit down and make a bucket list of the bands that we felt closest to and wanted to play with one more time and who stepped forward and made that happen. Please give it up for Title Fight. Put your hands together. I don't throw the word favorite around lightly. Title Fight are one of my favorite current bands. They've helped me through some of the hardest times. They've been there for me through some of the loneliest rides. To have been able to get to know them as people, discuss music and literature, life with them, and that they came together and did this amidst a very, very busy schedule with real life shit means the world to me personally as a Title Fight fan. Thank you guys so, so, so much for being such a part of my music collection. Modern life is war. Please give it up. Incredible band that we were blessed to spend an amazing tour on the road with. It seems interesting to me that many people who seem to really love Bane on a sort of deeper, maybe even a bit of an irrational level, have the same response to Modern Life is War. They seem to really tug on people's heartstrings and I want to thank them for being a band infused with passion and meaning. Give it up for the promise. The X's on my hand are gone already, but I watched their set and I felt so fucking psyched, so proud to still be straight edge, to have that term mean something to me in a very real way. We were able to turn something very unfortunate that happened on tour and I think it was what, 2003? It was Bobby's first tour with us. We were out with The Promise and their van burned down to the ground in California. We got a call the next morning that their van was gone, that they had lost everything and they were going home. They didn't have anything. The money was gone. Everything was gone. We figured out where they were and we drove to the hotel to see what we could do, to see if we could talk them into continuing in any way possible. There were dudes in that hotel that came out to our van without any shoes on. They had no shoes anymore. They had nothing and they were very disheartened and they were very, very far from home. And we just told them, yo, you're not going home. You're getting in the van with us. We're all gonna squeeze in together. We're gonna go to Target right now and get you guys some new clothes, new kicks, and we're gonna finish this tour. And I don't say that to pat myself on the back or this band on the back, but I'll tell you that Three weeks stuffed into a van with those guys, formed a bond that never died, formed a friendship that was very, very special to us. And so that they did come together after many years not playing music to come and just do this for us means the world. Thank you so much to The Promise. Cruel Hands a band that we spent more time with on the road than I would imagine any other. There was no doubt that we were gonna have them be a part of this. They're our brothers for life. Thank you for all the memories, guys. Thanks for all the times that we all stuffed into a van together. Not because we had to, but because we wanted to. Because we couldn't get enough of each other. The return to Right Brigade, let's hear it, my brother Jesse. Saves the day, I forget anybody. Ceremony. Rude Awakening, kick this shit off. Josh Hines. Defeater. It's been magical, it's been everything that we could have dreamed. Went by in the blink of an eye. Thank you to all the bands for coming out and being a part of this. We're gonna do a deep cut right now. Well, maybe not. Fuck 
what you heard!
tape I don't know I don't think a lot of bands get to last as long as we lasted and still have kids giving a fuck about the demo tape songs man that's real special for us that you allowed us to never abandon the old stuff you stuck with us thank you there are people in this room who are in my living room in the winter of 95, 96 when I was dubbing that demo tape, when I couldn't make enough of them to just give out to as many people as possible. We'd written and recorded five songs real quickly. There are people in this room right now who have been riding hard for Bane ever since those days who were at our first shows. And then there are people in this room, I don't think I'm going to be able to name them all, but who have taken giving a fuck about this band to the most ridiculous degrees, who have made us feel like we mean more to them than just the sum of our parts, than just five guys making records and touring, but who took us into their lives, who took us into their everyday existence. There's a term that gets thrown around. Sometimes I think it's funny. Sometimes I think it's insulting for someone to be called a baniac. But some of them really like to self-apply it. Most every single one of them is here. Anyone who's seen us over a hundred times is in this room right now. Anyone... who's done ridiculous things to be a part of this. 
found themselves booking flights, spending money out of their own pocket to rent hotels, to take incredibly long road trips, taking time off of work, going hungry, finding themselves sleeping in the oddest places and train stations at two in the morning, traveling back and forth across oceans to be a part of this. I, I refuse to believe it was just about the songs. Uh, we formed a bond with some people that just got so thick they didn't want to let go as much as we didn't want to let go. I can't name you all. You know who you are. You know who you are if you went way the fuck out of your way. If you spend time giving a piece of yourself to be a part of this. I speak for every single one of us. Everyone who's gotten up here and played a song tonight, I speak for all of us. Thank you so much for making what we did seem so incredibly worthwhile, like it meant something, like you were gonna carry it with you, like it was important. These last two songs are for all of you.
I didn't write this song, but this song says it all. I can't say it any better. Promise you. 
we love you. You guys got a little more in you? Will you dance with us for this one? If we don't see the dance floor moving, we're marching right the fuck out the door. I promise you. I got a marching band over there and everything. This song is about finding your favorite thing, man. Finding your favorite person in the whole world and not letting anyone tell you that there's an expiration date to that, that there's an age limit to feelings that are irrational, to feelings that make you feel inside like your stomach is going to explode, like you got to take a piss constantly you're so in love you're so sure and there are bitter people out there that are going to tell you that that's kid shit that that's for teenagers and you need to move away from that they need to let go of that and take care of more adult bullshit but i'll tell you what if you take a second and really assess the people who are feeding you those lines you will note something about them, that they are mostly very, very miserable people who have lives that do not seem very interesting or fulfilling or worth chasing after. It's for the people in this room who are not afraid to love irrationally, who are not afraid to love something all the way through. Let's dance, people! Here we go! Yo, yo! Yo, yo!
Give that to me. I'm on one knee. Is this yours? Is anyone else missing a wedding ring? He said yes. So, you're a part of the day that has existed in my mind on different levels for 20 years. As soon as I got into this band, I knew that I loved it more than anything else. I knew that it was the thing that, that I had been waiting for to show up. I loved making music. I loved getting to travel. I loved being able to give a part of myself to this physically, emotionally, being challenged to try to say something, to try to stand for something, to try to be an energetic band, a compassionate band. Being the kid from Bain was, was a very addictive, very intoxicating thing for me. I loved it so, so much. And it's why it lasted as long as that, that it did. I just could never find a way to let go. We rode through endless trials, tribulations, the death of loved ones, marriages ending, children showing up. We did whatever it takes to just keep going. And it's because we loved it so, so much. And this day I always knew was gonna come, you know? I always knew this wasn't gonna last forever and ever. And in my quiet moments I would try to imagine what it was gonna be like, what it was gonna feel like. And now it's here and we just have a couple songs left and I'm at a complete loss for words to explain to any of you what I'm feeling, how much I'm gonna miss this, how much I appreciate every single one of you being here to send us off. Uh, I really don't have the words, but I wrote this song about not having the words and I would love it if you guys would sing it with me. It's called Speechless. Oh, 
Eagles are dead. Minor threat never died for me. They live inside all of us. They carry us through. They're there for us when we need them the most. When we least expect it. Bane is never going to play another song. But we're gonna stay with you for as long as you want us there. For as long as you need us there. And you're gonna be with us. And I need that. I don't ever want to be left alone. I'm still afraid of the dark. So don't let go. Start new bands. Speak your fucking mind. Find the beauty in sincerity, in utter passion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for never letting go. is for everyone who self applies the term hardcore kids I'm 
Thank you.